Aloshigun Aganja. He joins us now on the phone. Thanks very much for being with us, sir. Tell us what Russia's uh, joining of the WTO means for the organization. Sorry. Now, for the organization, well, there are a number of things we are focusing on. I think we have three main objectives in the next two to three days. One is to take stock of where we are as WTO, what we need to do differently or better. Second is to emphasize the importance, uh, about, uh, the importance of the fight against protectionism. And the third is to think about Doha, how do we take it forward and get some guidance from the minister. So we have three main objectives for the next three days. Understood. Now. Russia and Nigeria share a lot of parallels. How is Russia's joining the WTO going to help Russia diversify its economy away from oil? Well, that's critical for us and very, very important to us. Um, as you know, we are the seventh largest producer. We are the seventh largest producer of crude oil. We, are the eighth, we have the eighth largest reserve of gas, for example. But our petrochemical industry is not where it should be. So there's a lot of emphasis on the petrochemical industry. We're looking at uh, refinery plants. We're looking at fertilizer plants. We're looking at the chemicals. We're looking at plastic industry. And already we're beginning to see, you know, some encouraging signs here. We're seeing a number of investors coming to the country, investing, planning to invest in fertilizer plants, in petrochemical plants across the board. So I think that is one way we intend to diversify the economy. The strategy going forward is to build our industries in areas where we have comparative and competitive advantage. And there are three main areas. One is the area of oil and gas. The second is an area of agriculture. And the third is an area of uh, solid minerals, where today we have at least 33 different solid minerals in commercial quantity. So presumably Russia is going to be looking at Nigeria and using you as an example of how they can benefit uh, from WTO membership. But another parallel that you can draw between Russia and Nigeria is a problem with corruption. What are you doing as a government to reduce corruption and make Nigeria a more attractive place to do business? Well, you can say when you talk about corruption, I think you will see that that affects almost every country. But if you look at the ladder, the Transparency International, look at the index, we've been moving up over the years and we've done quite a number of things in the last few years. Um, of course, we have the uh, EFCC, we have the ICPC. They are completely empowered to take uh, to, to make sure that we address these issues completely as a country. And if you look at the other areas, I, I think when you talk about corruption, it takes two sides to do this. But I think generally um, perception is important to us. It doesn't matter whether, whether we agree or not, but that is part of the main areas which we are addressing as part of our investment climate reform. Our aspiration is to make sure that we have the Nigeria becomes yeah. the destination for investment in the next uh, three to five years. Alushigun Aganja, their Nigerian Trade and Investment Minister and WTO Ministerial Conference Chairman, thanks so much for your time.